Hey bakers, welcome back to My Bake Escape. It is officially the holiday season, which means lots of baking if you are anything like me. My favorite thing to bake during the holidays are cookies, and one of my favorite cookies to make during this time of year are these snowball cookies. They are easy to make, only require a few ingredients, and are melt in your mouth delicious. So I grew up making these with my mom and she always called them snowball cookies, but I know that they are also known as Russian tea cakes, Mexican wedding cakes or cookies, and I believe some people also call them butter balls. Whatever you call them, they are delicious. For the full recipe, visit mybakeescape.com. I have also listed the ingredients and measurements in the description of this video. The star of these cookies are the nuts. You can use walnuts or pecans, either will work just fine, but I do recommend toasting the nuts prior to using them in these cookies. If you toast them, it really brings out that nutty flavor. This is optional, but if you do choose to toast the nuts, basically what you do is you pour out about two cups of nuts on a cookie sheet, and you're gonna place these in a 300 degree Fahrenheit oven or 148 degrees Celsius for about eight to 12 minutes, checking on them around the midway point because they will burn. And you just wanna bake them until they're nice and toasty and turn a little bit darker like this. Let them cool completely before you use them in your recipe. So for this, I need the nuts to be super finely chopped and I have this pretty cool chopper that I'm gonna use. I got this one years ago from Pampered Chef, but I will link a similar one that you can find on Amazon in the description of this video. So basically you want to make sure that the nuts are completely cooled before you chop them because if you try to chop them while they're still warm, the steam will release and it'll just kind of make them like a paste. So make sure they're completely cooled before you chop them. So I add a little bit at a time to this chopper and then give it a few presses until the nuts are super fine and evenly chopped like this. You can chop these by hand, of course, or use a food processor. For me, this just was something that I had on hand and is easier for this recipe. I am actually chopping a little over two cups. I'm only gonna use one cup of these walnuts for this recipe. I am gonna reserve the additional cup of toasted walnuts to use in some chocolate chip cookies later on this week. So once the nuts are chopped, set them aside, and now it's time to work on the cookie. This cookie only requires six ingredients. Super easy to make, and like I said before, super delicious. So for this recipe, you'll need all-purpose flour, unsalted butter, powdered sugar, vanilla, salt, and the walnuts. You wanna make sure that the butter is room temperature because you're gonna need to cream it in a bowl for a few minutes. It doesn't take a lot of sugar, it's only about a quarter cup of powdered sugar, but you'll see at the end we add more powdered sugar to the finishing cookie and it's perfectly sweetened. So I start by combining the dry ingredients. To the flour, I'm, I added the salt and I'm giving that a mix. That's it for the dry ingredients. Now it's time to work on the wet ingredients. So in a large bowl, I'm going to cream the butter. You can do this in a stand mixer if you want. And as I said, this butter needs to be room temperature so you can see it is nice and soft. And you'll need to cream this butter for about two to three minutes until it is light and fluffy. After that, add the powdered sugar and then you're gonna cream the butter and powdered sugar together for another minute or so. And this is what the butter and sugar look like after. Next, add the vanilla extract. Mix that in. Then it's time to incorporate the flour mixture. So add that into the butter mixture and carefully mix this in. I start with the mixer on low until the flour has mixed in. And then I take the speed up to a medium or a high to make sure everything's mixed in. 
Then I add the chopped walnuts and then mix those in to the flour and butter mixture. Then you'll get to a point where you can't use the mixer anymore if you're using a hand mixer. If you use a stand mixer, you can go ahead and mix it. But I grabbed a large spatula and I'm just kind of working the dough a little bit, pressing it together, making sure all of those walnuts are mixed in. Once mixed together, you'll see the texture of the dough is kind of sticky. It really does come together into a ball. So now this needs to chill in the refrigerator for at least one hour. You can make this a day or two ahead and then bake off the day that you need them. So I cover the bowl with plastic wrap and place in the refrigerator for one hour. When baking cookies, I always like to line the baking sheet with parchment paper. And unfortunately, parchment paper never comes in the correct size for the baking sheets that I have. I'm sure you could probably order custom sizes on. I like to order these half sheets of parchment paper and then I'm using a smaller baking sheet. So I just cut it so that it fits correctly in the cookie sheet. I really do not like it when parchment paper is sticking out over the edges because it will create kind of an uneven bake for your cookies or whatever it is that you're baking. So I just take some time to trim the parchment paper down to the size that I need. And if you notice, sometimes you just go little by little, but I'm very picky when it comes to this. I want to make sure it fits perfectly. And so I take time to do that and then it fits. So now that the dough has chilled for an hour in the refrigerator, it's time to scoop out the dough. For this, I use a small ice cream scoop. You could use a spoon or just eyeball it by pinching a little bit of dough at a time. I like to use an ice cream scoop because it makes this process faster and it also ensures that each of the cookies are roughly the same size so that they bake evenly. The ice cream scoop that I use for these cookies is a number 24 and you can find it on Amazon. I've included a link to this ice cream scoop in the description of this video. Once the sheet is pretty full, I go ahead and take each ball of dough and gently roll it in between my hands just making sure that they are nice and round. You'll see there's a lot of walnuts so they might kind of crack a little bit but that's okay. Smash it together and roll it gently into a nice round ball. If you don't get a perfect ball shape it's okay. They're still going to turn out really good and these don't need to have as much space in between them because they don't spread as much as other cookies while they bake. These are going to bake at 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190.5 degrees Celsius and they're gonna bake for about 13 to 15 minutes just until they are golden brown and you will see that they crack a little bit on top. Don't worry, that's normal. So let these cool for about 10 to 15 minutes on the cooling rack on the pan. And while those cool, I am going to get the powdered sugar ready. So these are gonna be rolled around in powdered sugar. You do need to make sure that they are fairly cool they can be a little warm, but you want them to make sure that they are cool enough to handle. You see they are golden brown, perfectly cooked, and the next step is to roll it around in that powdered sugar. This is why there isn't that much sugar in the actual cookie recipe itself, because these are rolled in this delicious powdered sugar in the end, and it ends up being perfectly sweet, buttery, toasty, walnut flavored, melt in your mouth cookie. These are so delicious. So once you roll each cookie around in powdered sugar, I let them cool completely, give them a second coat of powdered sugar, and you can store these in an airtight container for up to five days on the counter. You can freeze the dough ahead of time. So when you make the dough, you can put it in a freezer safe bag, put it in the freezer for up to 30 days, and then thaw out and then bake as I did here. This is a great recipe to get your kids involved in. They can help roll the dough into the balls before they're baked, and then they can help roll these baked cookie balls in that powdered sugar. It's fun to get the whole family involved, especially during the holidays. So this is just with one coat, but I wanted to try it out, so I opened one up, and you'll see it's a little crumbly because it's still warm. But look at all those pieces of walnut and it's so buttery, perfectly sweetened. Ugh, these are delicious. They really do melt in your mouth. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and I really do hope that you try this recipe soon. If you do, let me know in the comments what you think of the recipe and also let me know what you call these cookies. I know that uh, many people call them different things, so let me know in the comments what you call these cookies. And of course, if you do try this recipe and you have questions, I am happy to answer those questions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. I do have a few more recipes that I plan to share with you. Actually, the next video will be a recipe for these delicious cranberry pistachio biscotti. So make sure to turn on those notifications and if you don't know, I also have a playlist. It's a travel vlog playlist and we recently went on a Disney cruise on the Disney fantasy and we went on the very merry time cruise and it was so much fun. I am currently editing that video and plan to release it in the next week. So if you like to watch those travel vlogs, make sure to subscribe and check out that playlist. Thanks for watching and have a sweet day.